As a VR enthusiast who's been on board since the Oculus Rift DK2 days, it's a bit frustrating that VR's growth hasn't taken off as much as we'd hoped it would back in those early days. While I've addressed several technical limitations that are holding the medium back from achieving success, today I want to address an issue that's arguably having just as much of a hand in slowing down VR's market progress as anything in its design restrictions. Marketing. While not as glamorous or tangible as developing new technology, this is an issue where we, the VR community, can have a massive role in supporting the medium to overcome an obstacle. Hello Virtual Dreamers, Gregory here. Seeing as we're going to be discussing VR's marketing problem, I think it's worthwhile to remind ourselves of the strengths of the VR medium and the things that have worked to its benefit over the years. The most apparent of these clearly being its power of immersion. VR's ability to make you feel like you're in the game world is unlike anything else that has come before it, and you can't get this benefit from just about any other media. You can lose yourself in a story, a good gameplay loop, or a music track if you're in the right headspace and the materials are good, but when VR works, it makes you feel immersed whether you want to be or not. It's an incredible effect and it enables experiences in narrative and gameplay that just can't be replicated by other media. On the note of gameplay, actually, VR and its XR siblings' current standard of motion controls and their emphasis on more sophisticated interactions is also a huge strong point that's worth discussing. You can swing a sword around, race with a wheel, or aim a firearm with more precision, freedom, and immersion than just about any other media have in the past. While it's possible to use these tools outside of VR if one wishes, you'd be hard pressed to get more precise slashes in Beat Saber if you're just playing from a monitor, so it's very clear that there are benefits to using VR's immersion from a gameplay perspective as well. And if we really think about it, a lot of the ways that technology has progressed and the prevalence of VR related books, movies, and video games speak volumes to how almost intrinsic a desire it can be to want to be in the world's artists craft and present to us. Whether it's the holodeck from Star Trek, Tron's a cyberspace, The Matrix, Sword Art Online, or The Oasis, the dream of wanting to be in the world we see on our screens or have the power of our computer creativity feel tangible is a common one, and the popularity of the series that I mentioned before clearly indicates that there's a market to live out that fantasy. So why is it that when we have technology available to experience the VR dream to an extent, we currently see ourselves in the position today where we have people spouting nonsense like VR is dying and the sales for headsets aren't even at a successful console's level yet? Well, to answer that question, if we leave aside the design limitations like the VR locomotion and haptics problems, I'd say just about all the positives I mentioned before are having troubles being communicated in the marketing that we're using at this point. When I said earlier that we have the technology available to experience the VR dream to an extent, I think the to an extent part needs more emphasis. Today's VR is a dimension apart from anything we've had in the past, but it's likewise incomparable to the experience that a lot of VR media has promoted. If you're coming into VR expecting a nerve gear, and you get an Oculus Quest, great though the experience may be, the chances aren't low that you'll come away disappointed. Expectations matter, and unfortunately, the vast majority of VR media in the past has promoted an experience that our present technology isn't equipped yet to deliver. Without correcting these expectations to better reflect what we have now, we're going to lose some people and inevitably get a ton of commenters spouting annoying stuff like, Oculus is not real VR. On the note of poor expectations, I think it also bears mentioning that the gameplay side of VR isn't any easier to sell at this point. The way the vast majority of people are marketed to revolves around some form of visual or audio media. This works well for visual media like movies or video game cutscenes, but it fails completely at conveying the fun of gameplay and interactivity. A lot of the time we gamers spend in games and VR is spent doing things that arguably don't look very cool and can't be conveyed without playing it for yourself. There's nothing more boring than watching someone else play an RPG. 
There's a reason why game companies still often resort to using cinematic trailers over just letting us watch gameplay so much of the time. And unfortunately, VR won't really have this situation any easier. Still though, I'd say the biggest problem when it comes to VR marketing of all here, and the one that's the hardest to address, is that the greatest strength of virtual reality, the sense of presence, can't be conveyed through a video. To give you a point of reference here, I've been a VR enthusiast from the day John Carmack presented the Oculus Rift prototype at E3 of 2012. I was a gigantic Sword Art Online fan as soon as the anime came out, and I spent just about every day for over two years thinking about VR immersion while I was designing my VR rig. So keep all that in mind when I have to make the admittance that I completely fail to comprehend what the actual sensation of virtual reality presence and immersion were like until I used it for the first time with the Oculus Rift Development Kit 2. VR is unfortunately an experience that you have to try to understand properly. That is terrible for marketing here, since it means the very best reason to try out the medium is restricted to only being useful for people who have basically already been sold on the medium. It's like we're trying to market a movie using only screenshots, or manga with only text synopses. Sure, these are elements of the medium, but without the ability to convey the best aspect directly, we have to admit that we're working at a bit of a handicap here. While all of the blame can't be levied on marketing to explain VR's current woes, the situation isn't a pleasant one and it'd be better if we could find a way to deal with it. Thankfully, unlike the VR locomotion problem and VR haptics, this isn't a problem that we have to invent new technologies in order to resolve. So let's look over what we can do and what is already being done in order to address this prevalent issue. With regards to VR media and shows, while there are still quite a bit of stuff being released that looks towards a future that is probably still a good ways off, we are thankfully starting to see more awareness of VR coming in from what we actually have in media that is more grounded in its approach to the subject. Ready Player One's movie, different from the book in many ways though it may be, has thankfully done a good bit to better promote the idea of high immersion VR through the use of more sophisticated rigs and better hardware rather than going straight to brain computer interfaces and reality warping. Even if normal marketing isn't the most effective way to sell VR, at the very least it's helping to mellow out expectations so people come to the medium with an open mind rather than expecting it to give them unlimited s and food. For what it's worth as well, while VR gameplay arguably may not be as flashy as the crazy animations of normal video games, this doesn't mean that there aren't aspects to it that aren't impressive and difficult to replicate for other media. When you have singular games where you're able to shoot zombies, draw on a board, and play a piano, all without any change to the control or having to relearn a set of buttons, you've got something pretty cool on your hands. VR's strength in gameplay is the nigh unlimited versatility that it allows, and I think the positive response a lot of people have to seeing mixed reality videos where you can see how the gameplay of a person is impacting the virtual world shows that we aren't completely beaten in this area. Hopefully the desires for gamers to get more real gameplay from trailers versus scripted nonsense and cutscenes too may mean that we'll see more receptiveness to slower gameplay trailers as a whole, which would be good news for VR. Finally, while I did say that VR's biggest asset, presence, does have the issue of not being communicable without trying it, it must also be remembered that VR's greatest strength is its ability to communicate that presence feeling almost instantly when you try it. That means that the best way we have to market VR is to simply put, get people to try it. This is an area where we, the VR community, have way more power than even multi-billion dollar companies. It's one thing for me to tell my friends about how cool VR can be and the experiences I'm having in it. It's another thing entirely for me to bring my Oculus Quest over to their houses and for us to play Beat Saber and Super Hot all afternoon. The former approach just made for fun conversation. 
The latter sold an Oculus Quest the day of and has three people waiting for stock to come back in. The best way to solve the VR marketing problem is for us, the VR community, to do our part to make sure that anyone who wants to try VR or hasn't tried it yet, tries it and has a good experience. As someone who's been with VR for all these years, I'm actually hopeful that this video I'm making right now becomes completely irrelevant and lost to history someday when there are enough cheap VR headsets out there that anyone who wants to try it can and everyone intrinsically understands the benefits of presence and all we have to worry about are the technical and design challenges of the medium. There was a time when I was younger where it felt like video games were only ever talked about and covered as the domain of nerds living in their mother's basements. Yet now, being a gamer or someone who plays games is as diverse as being someone who watches movies, reads books, or just about anything else. Here's hoping we get to live to see the day where this is the same case for VR and other cross-reality mediums. Thank you very much for watching this video. Be sure to rate, comment, share, and subscribe to let YouTube algorithm someone know that you want to come back here for more. Consider joining my Patreon to help me in my VR endeavors and join the Discord server in order to talk with other like-minded people. Till next time, my fellow adventurers and dreamers, this has been Gregory, logging out.